More than 5,000 light years from Earth, astronomers have discovered a second exomoon candidate. This moon is unlike anything we've ever seen before. It's three times bigger than Earth. What led to this? What does it appear to be like? Is it a home for extraterrestrial life? Is humanity ever going to go there? Is there a second moon on Earth? Join us as we explore the moon three times the size of our beloved planet. It's just the second object discovered that might be an exomoon or a moon outside of our solar system that's been classified as such. The massive moon was discovered orbiting Kepler-1708b, a Jupiter-sized planet located 5,500 light-years from Earth. The newly discovered celestial body is 2.6 times the size of our planet. In our own system, such a large moon has no analogue. This celestial body has a diameter more than nine times that of our moon. David Kipping, Assistant Professor of Astronomy and Director of Columbia University's Cool Worlds Lab and his team were the ones that discovered this second exomoon candidate. The first one discovered, a Neptune-sized moon orbiting the gigantic exoplanet Kepler-1625b, was discovered in 2018. Astronomers have discovered more than 10,000 exoplanet candidates, but exomoons are significantly more difficult to find. They are new and unknown territory. We can better understand planetary systems by studying these exomoons, such as how they are formed, if they can host life, and whether they influence the habitability of planets. A new era of extrasolar astronomy may be dawning one that focuses less on distant planets and more on their natural satellites, which may harbour life. Kipping and his team are still trying to establish that the first candidate they identified is, in fact, an exomoon, and this latest finding will likely face the same uphill road. Our solar system is home to more than 200 different moons, each with its own unique characteristics. As an early Earth analogue, Saturn's moon Titan may have a thick atmosphere and freezing hydrocarbon oceans on its surface. Icy moons, such as Jupiter's Europa, may be ideal places for life to develop since they are frozen globes that conceal subterranean oceans. There are many other planets and moons that appear to be desolate wastelands yet could be home to water or ice in their shadowed craters and maze-like networks of tunnels flowing beneath them. The sheer fact that six of our solar system's eight primary planets have moons is an essential commonality among these worlds. Exoplanets have been discovered orbiting stars outside our solar system. However, exomoons are more difficult to locate due to their smaller size. Despite the fact that there are already over 4,000 confirmed exoplanets in our galaxy, their discovery was not without difficulty. More than a few of them have been discovered by observing how starlight dims as an object passes in front of its star. The difficulty of spotting smaller moons, which create even smaller dips in starlight, is exacerbated. NASA's exoplanet hunter Kepler spacecraft was utilized to locate this second possible moon by analyzing data from some of the coldest gas giant exoplanets. The researchers employed this search criterion since the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn have the greatest number of moons around them. Only one of the 70 planets they studied had a companion signal that appeared to be a moon, with only a 1% probability that it was something else. Kipping described the signal as, It's a stubborn signal. We threw the kitchen sink at this thing, but it just won't go away. There are several similarities between the newly discovered exomoon candidate and the first one detected. Both are likely gaseous, which explains their vast size and distance from their host stars. There are three main ideas as to how moons are created. One example is when two massive space objects crash and the resulting debris is blown away and forms a moon. Another possibility is capture. Neptune's moon Triton, for example, is thought to have been grabbed from the Kuiper belt and brought into orbit around the gas giant. The third is the formation of moons from the same ingredients that formed the planets in the solar system's early days, such as gas and dust swirling around stars. 
Kepler 1625b and Kepler 1708b are two plausible candidates for exomoons that may have originated as planets and been dragged into orbit by their parent bodies. In Kipping's opinion, these two contenders may represent the exception rather than the rule when it comes to the size of moons outside our solar system. According to Kipping, we'll have to wait until 2023 to try and see the exomoon again because of the long orbit of the planet and its putative moon. Because of the newly launched James Webb Space Telescope JWST, it might be possible to quickly confirm or deny the existence of an extraterrestrial moon. This in and of itself provides an intriguing possibility. JWST may be used to survey in search of exomoons. It is possible that JWST, like Hubble, will be remembered for its discovery of exomoons more than its other accomplishments. A number of factors contribute to this conclusion. As soon as we identify a large number of exomoons, it will be easier for us to understand their variety and importance. We may have evolved life in tidal pools because of our own moon's tidal currents, which may have made Earth habitable. Exomoon research may also provide insight into the genesis of planets. As time goes on, Kipping and his crew continue to collect evidence in favour of Exomoon's claims of existence. The Exomoons themselves are great targets in the search for life. It's fair to infer that certain rocky exomoons may circle gas giant planets in their habitable zones where liquid water can exist, given their apparent variation in size. In this case, science fiction may have come before science fact, Christensen argues. Take the movie Avatar, which depicts a livable moon around a gas giant. There are habitable moons orbiting gas giants in Star Wars. It is scientifically possible to produce a rock surrounding a gas giant that has the average solar radiation and might have liquid water on its surface. There are, however, some issues. When a moon orbits a massive planet, it is subject to the gravitational push and pulls of the bigger world, which can result in extensive volcanic activity, like on Jupiter's moon, Io. Radiation from gas giants like Jupiter, on the other hand, has the potential to be lethal. Furthermore, these systems may display unusual properties. When lined up correctly, Christensen explains that in addition to the regular cycle provided by the Earth's rotation, you'd get an extra day-night cycle from passing behind the planet. Nearly probably, there are rocks of the right temperature surrounding gas giants. There is still a lot of debate regarding whether or not they can be made habitable. Even though Kepler-1708bi is not an exoplanet, it is an exciting frontrunner at the beginning of what may become an era of exomoon study. Extrasolar moons are a common occurrence in the universe, and Kipping hopes to find out how frequent they are and what they look like. You probably learned that as a kid, unlike other planets, Earth only has one moon. However, it turns out that this isn't the case. Planet Earth has two moons, at least for now. But how did Earth's second moon come to be discovered so late? Where is it and what does it look like? The discovery of Earth's quasi-moon Kamo Oalawa was made in 2016. Smaller than a football field in diameter, it orbits the Earth in a spiral motion that travels up to 100 times our moon's distance. But this pattern shows up because it is also, but not quite, on an Earth-like orbit. In other words, it's a strange dance. Because of its orbital alignment, Kamo Oalawa is thought to be a fragment of an asteroid or the primordial moon that is the first moon that synchronized its orbit with Earth. A NASA-run telescope first detected it in Hawaii. It has a dimmer appearance than other moons. It was then amplified with a monocular telescope, which provided some additional illumination. It features samples comparable to those sent back from the Moon by a mission in 1971, indicating that if it is part of the Moon, it was battered by another space rock. On the other hand, scientists believe she's only here for a short time. If it continues to orbit the Earth for another few hundred years, Kamo Oalawa may be gone forever. At some point, it will likely break out of its current orbit and cruise across interstellar space 
for 300 years or more. So our second moon is simply a pseudo-moon and it won't continue orbiting us indefinitely. However, our first moon is quite intriguing. It not only orbits our planet for billions of years, but it also makes itself appear larger due to a phenomenon known as the moon illusion. This means that even though its size has remained constant, it can appear much larger than it actually is. The moon, however, is actually moving away from the Earth. It was 14,000 miles away from the Earth about 4.5 billion years ago, but it's been migrating at an annual rate of 1.48 inches. In the distant future, our second moon will no longer orbit our dear planet, and our actual moon will be farther away than ever. However, it is unlikely that this will happen during our lifetime. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.